everyone, WROI, WROIFM.com. We are streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5. Audio and soon to be video on RTC Channel 4. Hi, Scott. Hey, good afternoon. Well, almost good afternoon. It feels like it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You've been here for a while today. We appreciate that. Yes, sir. Scott's here from RTC. And of course, if you download the TuneIn Radio app, you can use that on your smartphone or your Android device. 55 degrees outside the window on 8th Street. Pleased to welcome to the studio this morning Dr. Sue Elsperman, former Lieutenant Governor of the State of Indiana, and also Amy Rowe, Executive Director. Fulton County Chamber of Commerce. Ladies, welcome. Nice to have you here. Thanks for having us. Well, it's great to be here, Tom. You are in Rochester today because? Well, because Amy invited me to That's speak to these uh, <laughs> women in business, their first ever a gathering and the beginning of a series to bring women business leaders together to okay. see how we can strengthen the impact they have in this community and beyond. Mm -hmm. Particular topic today, the partnering topic, right, Amy? Yes, sir. Okay. So when we looked at how do we set this up, and it's multiple conversations that we went through to be able to, to create the brand, is we felt like uh, we needed to actually have women to not be competitive with each other, but to actually complement and come alongside each other. So we looked at what does that look like, and that's getting outside yourself. And so we used the terms partner to start off with. You need to partner with somebody. And then when you partner with them, you can inspire them. And when you inspire them, you empower them to be bigger and better than they could ever imagine. So we looked at that and were intentional in creating, hopefully, a platform for bringing women in business and leadership together, not only the age that we are, but also young ladies, to be able to support that. Um, it was very exciting to yeah. see the uh, number of young women who had come from Rochester High School and we had some of the top young women in the junior and senior classes and uh, important for them to see that this community supports them, wants them to come back and return and be a big part of the community. So thank you, Amy, for doing that. Talk, talk with them about your message this morning. Well, it was really about how women really can play a bigger role and the importance of mentoring, working together, both being a mentor and mentoring others. Um, being assertive because sometimes uh, women what we know uh, both in the business sector and political both is women often have to be asked uh, to take on a job but often uh, are very well qualified and, and yet uh, don't step up to the plate so being assertive enough to do that and encouraging them to really not let there be any glass ceilings. One of the things that we have seen recently uh, especially I think starting with women's soccer is the more of a demand for equal pay. Is that part of your message as well? Equal well, it, pay, equal work, that type of thing? You know it's really about um, going after uh, the positions that, that you desire and uh, the research is still uh, goes both ways on the pay. Yes it looks like about 80 cents on the dollar but oftentimes the research is showing that those are sometimes the choices we make and the positions we take. So my goal is to make sure that we're moving women up the ladder so that the more they're up the ladder they're going to have um, pay and opportunities and making a difference and leading in the ways that they wish to. Something you've been working on since you were Lieutenant Governor, right? Well, I've been working with the Office of Small Business and okay. Entrepreneurship trying to encourage women as business owners, the WBE programs we have across the state with the certifications, entrepreneurship, all those things that we know uh, women can play and are playing an ever greater role. I, I don't know if many are aware, but right now 55% of undergraduates are women. So women are outpacing men in education. Um, they're coming into the business environment at almost equal numbers. Now what we need to see is that they continue to move up the ranks uh, and continue to see themselves as the executives, the leaders, and the owners. Amy, how do we follow up on this now, now that Dr. Elsperman has been here and made this presentation to the women in business? Yeah, so we actually have our next uh, event planned. It's okay. June 10th. It will be at the library. And we have uh, Mayor uh, Blair Milo. I actually met her at the same event that I met Sue. And uh, she impressed me. Actually, Ted was the one. She impressed me, but I didn't think to have her as the second speaker. But uh, Mayor Denton said, hey, why don't you reach out to uh, Mayor Milo and see if she would be available. And she is probably in her 30s. Young, dynamic, ex-military, uh, returned back to Laporte mm -hmm. a few years ago and is doing an amazing job uh, engaging young professionals in that city. 
to make it cool. Yeah, and working very diligently on economic development. And so for me, that was a part of it also because we're attempting to grow, and she was a very large part of making that happen. And so, and she's unconventional, which I think is fun. Yeah, their um, their motto in the city is the hub of awesome. And that is her theme, the hub of <laughs> awesome. Like so that, that kind of tells you that exactly. she she really is one to inspire mm -hmm. uh, young leaders and those young professionals to want to come back, to engage, and to see themselves as being a part of something big in that community. So you will you will be very blessed to have her here. Yeah. You are, of course, one of the candidates for the next presidency at Ivy Tech, Ivy Tech State College, and of course that is a multitude of campuses throughout the state. I can see you taking the message that you've been talking about this morning to those Ivy Tech students. That would be part of it, right? Well, absolutely workforce development and making sure that every one of our Hoosiers young, as well as those incumbent workers who, who maybe need to skill up, uh, Ivy Tech is such an important part of our state. When we touch almost 200,000 Hoosiers a year with that opportunity to move up into a better job and meeting the needs of our employers. I think the thing that impressed me as Lieutenant Governor is I visited all 92 counties, employers across the state, and they all unanimously need that skilled workforce, and Ivy Tech's just a big part of that. So very proud of what it's doing for our state today and hope to be a part of that in the future. Can we get Ivy Tech students to stay longer at Ivy Tech and that type of thing? I know that would be one of the things you would probably work for. Well, we want to make sure that the programs we offer in each community are matched to the employer's needs. And that's really the aligning. And as we align to the jobs that are there with the employers, and then we can attract them in knowing that those students will have opportunities when they complete. And many of those will want down the road to go on for a four-year degree or continue on with all of our other great institutions in the state, but uh, Ivy Tech plays a very key role. Dr. Sue Elsberman is our guest. She's former Lieutenant Governor in Rochester today, along with Amy Rowe, Executive Director of the Fulton County Chamber of Commerce. What, what is it like to be Lieutenant Governor? Well, I'm not anymore. <laughs> you were a long time ago. <laughs> you know, it is a tremendous honor. Um, it, it's that being that number two chief executive in Indiana, it's a bigger role than in most states. In many states, it's simply your number two. Um, here, there are six agencies that you oversee, so we call that the family of business of the lieutenant governors. And overseeing agriculture, rural development, small business, uh, defense development, um, housing and community development, all of those were, what was neat about it, it was about building capacity in our communities trying to help communities be everything they want it to be. So all of those programs helped shore up. We weren't a regulatory, we weren't regulatory agencies. We were about how do we help you grow. Uh, so it was a great way to see the state. Um, I, I am so honored to have gotten to be a part of the bicentennial planning and so many of the initiatives that really show the best of our Hoosier State. And that's really the memories that that I will take back from that are, are ones that I will treasure forever. Agriculture a big part of our community, also a big part of the state of Indiana. You worked on that. And it has uh, been increasing. I, I know the, the week after I left, I think we made three announcements of new agriculture related businesses the following year. And, you know, knowing that the things I think we did the last three years, and, and which Lieutenant Governor Eric Holcomb is doing a great job continuing as we move forward, and, and he'll bring in another whole level of energy. But ag is such an opportunity for Indiana, not only to be strong as it is today, but to be stronger and more in the innovation arena. So I'm very proud of what we've done in the agribusiness area and standing up Agrinovus Indiana, which will really be a game changer. If we know about North Carolina's research Triangle Park, this is really the initiative that can do that in agriculture, building off Purdue and the great ag resources we have. Governor Daniels will travel quite a bit, Governor Pence has a bit as well, to other countries to see if we could partner with the state of Indiana. Is that something that will work for our state? Absolutely. Um, I did two trade missions uh, over those three years to Asia primarily, China, South Korea, Japan, Taiwan. There are tremendous opportunities across the board, but agriculture as well. If you think about China where they can't feed a billion people mm -hmm. and their methods of agriculture aren't where ours are today. There's many opportunities. Of course, many of these things have trade issues that are not negotiated at the state level. However, what we can do is really leverage 
our universities like Purdue and create the business to business relationships because all of Asia needs to figure out how do they feed in a healthy way uh, that that citizen population they have. Africa follows right along. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There are so many places in the world. Agriculture and food security will be the challenge of the next generation and uh, I think we are so well poised not only to take care of Indiana and the United States but we can be a significant player in the world. Governor Pence will be in Rochester next Thursday to sign a bill that was uh, start, kind of started here in terms of the meth and pharmacies and things like that and uh, it's not a fair question but uh, are you supporting him for re-election? Oh absolutely you know and that's a very fair question I think he's done a, a great job uh, Indiana has made such progress over these last three years you know knowing that when we came into office it was eight percent unemployment now we're sitting at five more jobs than ever before in the state of Indiana um, great movements on infrastructure the investments in roads and education you know i i think we're doing the right things it's important for hoosiers that we stay the course and uh, uh governor pence and i remain great friends it was such an honor to work with him and be able to serve and now moving on to that next uh, seat on the bus <laughs> excellent dr sue elsperman again our guest today talking to the women business here in fulton county and in rochester today along with executive director amy rowe of the fulton county chamber of commerce ladies have we uh, pretty well covered it yes Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for so letting us. Thank you so much us. for stopping by and being here with us. We do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Tom.